皆様、大変お待たせいたしました。ただいまより自然エネルギー財団主催国際シンポジウム日本三十年と戸戸崎の未来へを始めたときにおなじみの日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年の日本三十年のトーマス・コーベリエルより開会の挨拶を申し上げます。Uh, Welcome to the Japan Renewable Energy Conference. 皆さん、ようこそいらっしゃいました。えー、もう本日、自然エネルギー財団国際シンポジウム2030年とその先の未来へ、シンポジウムにようこそおいでいただきました。まあ、皆様に対しましては、まあ、ぜひとも将来に向けてのビジョンを築いていただきたいと思っているわけであります。しかしながら、その意思決定を行うという場合には、まあ、これはもう個人の生活でもまた、まあ、政府の方が決定あったとしましても、今何をやるべきかというのが一番重要な決断であります。もちろん将来に向けて何をするべきかということについてはこれからもその内容は変わっていくことでありましょう。今日お話をいたしますのは何が達成可能かということでお話をしていきたいと思います。経産省のこのシナリオに対してこの話を進めていくということではありませんで、我々はより高いところにその目標を設定しております。日本のエネルギー供給システムをこれから開発していくにあたってどうするべきかということについてお話をしてまいります。日本の電力システムにマシンの意味での,この発電業者との間の競争が生まれるようなシナリオを考えています。そしてこれらの事業者が供給できる電力をより良い送配電システムを通じて送れるように、そしてまたこれらのこの送電業者は中立的な送電業者であって、すべての,この発電業者に対して、平等な形で競争を可能にしていくということが必要だと考えております。再生可能エネルギーを用いて、電力発電というものを低コストで十分な競争ができるように、そして日本の消費者に対して、できるだけ低価格、低価格、コストで供給できるようにということを提案していきたいと思います。そしてウランですとか化石燃料といった輸入燃料にできるだけ依存しないで済むような形を考えております。このシンポジウムはこのような発展に大きな貢献ができればと望んでおります。では次に、我々の財団の創設者であります、孫の作業者をご紹介いたします。孫氏の長期的なアプローチを持った人間でありますし、また企業家としての経験を多に持っている方であります。こういった機会が生じた場合に、どのようなその機会を持っているか。for new services at competitive price. It's my honor to give the floor to Masayoshi-san. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas just spoke to you. He is the director of our symposium, of our organization, and he had been a minister for energy in Sweden until last year. But after the accident in Fukushima, he has come to help us with the wisdom that he has gained through his. Uh, his tenure as the, uh, the director of the agency in Sweden. Uh, so, of course, how he has uh, many responsibilities to fill in his own country, uh, but having seen what has transpired in uh, Fukushima, 
Uh, he uh, has uh, been very helpful in uh, bringing Japan back to its feet and then uh, to make contribution uh, to uh, many other uh, countries throughout the world. And so he has given us a lot of his uh, wisdom and uh, many uh, uh, pointers uh, to help us. So uh, there is a lot of discussion right now in uh, Japan about how to create a safe uh, future uh, for uh, the children of our society. Now, those of us uh, who are uh, already uh, in the elderly uh, age bracket, uh, we're not talking about uh, decades uh, from now on, uh, because it does not uh, really uh, matter uh, to uh, many of us uh, who are much older. However, uh, we have to think about the pricing and also uh, the uh, volume of energy uh, that is to be expended uh, today, uh, because because it could impact uh, the uh, lives of our uh, children uh, and uh, the future uh, generation, uh, tens of thousands of years into the future. So uh, this has now uh, become a uh, nationwide uh, discussion. Uh, are we going to go with 0%, 15%, or 20 or 25% of uh, uh, nuclear energy uh, for the uh, future uh, of Japan? And this is a three uh, scenario uh, that we are looking at. Now, uh, between 0 uh, and 15%, uh, uh, between these two scenarios, uh, let us try to take a look at uh, the difference uh, between these two scenarios. In each of these scenarios, uh, the target uh, for uh, renewables is uh, between 30 and 35 percent. So even at 0 percent uh, nuclear scenario, uh, we are uh, going to have to uh, provide 35% of our energy uh, through renewables. And the question is whether it is going to be possible uh, to do that, or many people question this, uh, the possibility or feasibility of having so much uh, renewables. Uh, looking at uh, the actual uh, utilization of uh, renewable uh, energies, uh, with uh, photovoltaic uh, for 2012, uh, we believe uh, that uh, there uh, will be, uh, by the end of the year, uh, 2 million kilowatts uh, of capacity of, of, of photovoltaic and for wind power about 380,000 kilowatts and we believe uh, that this uh, target for 2012 uh, can be reached and we at SoftBank uh, have been uh, trying uh, to set uh, some examples uh, for the future and making every effort uh, to go towards this goal. So uh, by the year 2030 uh, we have up to now now uh, 19 million kilowatts of uh, capacity. And so that means that we will need to uh, increase this to 120 to 140 million uh, kilowatts, or uh, six times uh, more than what we have uh, cumulatively up to now in 18 years. And so uh, we might question whether we have the potential to be able to provide uh, so much uh, new uh, uh, renewable energy uh, in uh, Japan. Uh, in Japan, do we have enough uh, wind? Uh, do we have enough uh, sunlight to be able to uh, provide uh, so much energy? Now, if we are uh, to uh, try to uh, look at the uh, wind uh, power generation uh, potential, uh, just uh, with Hokkaido and uh, Kyushu alone, uh, we have uh, 10 times uh, the uh, potential uh, that we have uh, currently at uh, 540 uh, million kilowatts in Hokkaido, 480 in Kyushu. And having been engaged in this business, I can now feel that we have abundant supply of uh, renewable energies in Japan. Before I got into this business, I had doubted whether in this small land of Japan, whether we have enough uh, resources uh, for wind or photovoltaic generation. However, now that I am uh, engaged in this business, I can see uh, that 
that there is abundant uh, resources of wind as well uh, as uh, solar uh, power. Maybe we are uh, number three in the world uh, as far as the potential uh, for uh, photovoltaic uh, generation is. Uh, so uh, those of uh, those people who are saying that we don't have that potential, I would like them to be engaged themselves in this uh, generation uh, business to see uh, what kind of potential we have. So uh, we have uh, wind, uh, we have geothermal, we have hydropower, we have photovoltaic potential. Now, we do still have uh, problems here. Even if we do have the power generation capabilities, if you don't have uh, the uh, sufficient infrastructure for transmission, uh, then uh, these uh, generated power will not be put to its use. Currently, uh, the grid is owned uh, entirely by the uh, nine uh, power utilities uh, in uh, Japan. And uh, because they have a monopoly of the uh, grid, and they don't want to be engaged in uh, providing the uh, transmission uh, service uh, to the uh, renewable energies, uh, because they want to maintain uh, their monopoly. And uh, these uh, grids are not uh, really uh, connected or not interconnected. So in Japan, uh, we have nine uh, different uh, regions in uh, the country, uh, and uh, they were all governed uh, independently. Uh, but uh, the uh, grid, uh, which connects uh, all of these uh, regions, uh, need to be operated uh, all as one. Now, uh, there was concern in the Kansai region uh, that uh, KEPCO will not be able to uh, provide a sufficient uh, power uh, to its, uh, the service region. Uh, but uh, it was also apparent that there was still uh, surplus uh, power being generated in other uh, parts of the uh, nation. And so if we could uh, send uh, that power to the uh, Kansai area, then they would have uh, sufficient uh, power. Now, it turned out that uh, those concerns were not needed because uh, Kansai Electric had enough uh, generation capacity uh, to meet its demand. In uh, Japan right now, uh, we have uh, this uh, split uh, in the nation uh, between the networks at 50 and uh, 60 hertz uh, in uh, Japan. So what we need to do is to strengthen and enhance uh, the uh, power transmission grid uh, in Japan. And once we do have the infrastructure uh, for uh, the uh, transmission, uh, then wind alone uh, should be able uh, to uh, fulfill our needs. In addition to that, if we have bio, photovoltaic, uh, and other uh, forms of uh, renewable energy, uh, then I uh, feel uh, that uh, we have sufficient uh, resources uh, to uh, fulfill the demand. So what are some of the remaining and outstanding issues? Now, until very recently, uh, we had been relying uh, on uh, nuclear power generation for 30 percent of our uh, electricity. And it was said uh, that if, if, we, if we didn't have uh, these uh, nuclear power plants, then we are going to have a massive scale of uh, power uh, outages uh, in the uh, country. Uh, that's what uh, the power utilities uh, had uh, reached. However, now it's clear uh, that even without uh, nuclear power plants, uh, we are able to cope. And so uh, what uh, K Dan Ren uh, is now uh, saying is that if we don't have uh, nuclear power plants, uh, then and uh, the utility costs uh, will be very expensive. Uh, they are threatening us about the possibility of the electricity bill uh, doubling uh, had we not ha had any uh, power uh, uh, coming from the nuclear uh, uh, power generators. And so uh, if, uh, if uh, the, uh, the electricity uh, bill uh, could be twice what we are playing uh, today, that means that uh, we'll have to resort to more uh, thermal power plants, which means uh, that the fuel uh, that uh, supplies the thermal power plants will be very expensive. On top of that, uh, there will be more CO2 emissions uh, so that there will be uh, taxation on the uh, CO2 uh, that's generated. And so those uh, were uh, the hypotheses uh, of uh, the uh, 
the proponents of the nuclear power plant. Uh, I doubted that. Now, for all for households and, of course, uh, the uh, companies would like to avoid uh, any uh, increase in the uh, electricity bill. Even uh, a one yen increase is something that we want to avoid. Uh, but I feel that there is one uh, misunderstanding here or misconception here. Now, uh, there are many uh, calculations being made about the different scenarios. We're looking at 0% uh, nuclear, 15%, and 20 to 25% nuclear. What is the power generation cost uh, per kilowatt hour? And looking at the three scenarios, uh, how we have been able to show how that the uh, cost really isn't that different, because in the true uh, power generation uh, cost uh, for the nuclear power plant, if you were to include uh, the uh, cost uh, for uh, all of uh, the uh, the aftermath or of uh, the uh, the accident, as we have seen here, uh, uh, all the insurance that you would have to pay. Uh, for the uh, nuclear power plants. Now, we know that it is going to be impossible uh, to uh, build any new nuclear power plants. Even the government agrees that. And anything that has uh, uh, an age of uh, 40 years or so, uh, the uh, danger of a continuing operation of such uh, nuclear power plants will increase uh, very much. And what about the decommissioning cost? That is is a, a huge amount uh, that needs to be considered. And what about the wastes? Now, have all of these uh, costs been actually calculated in uh, the uh, nuclear power plant uh, cost uh, calculation? Now, uh, we uh, feel uh, that uh, perhaps uh, if you were to use 15% or 20% uh, nuclear power plant, then the cost of power generation could even be higher uh, than 0% uh, nuclear power. So uh, this should not uh, reflect on uh, the increase of the electricity uh, bill, uh, regardless of uh, whether it's going to be 0, uh, 15, or 20%. Uh, the lighter blue portion uh, um, is that portion where uh, there could be uh, some additional discussion. And as I mentioned, uh, if you are cautious about the calculation, it's possible uh, that at 15% uh, nuclear, uh, this uh, could result in a higher cost uh, compared to 0% uh, nuclear. And so, well, really, uh, the uh, true impact on the uh, electricity uh, bill is uh, the uh, competition environment rather than uh, the availability of nuclear power. Now, oh, if you look at your own uh, regions, uh, you uh, will find that you are living in a uh, on a monopoly uh, environment. So if you're living in the Kanto region, uh, there is only uh, uh, one uh, utility here providing her power. Now, uh, if there is a monopoly, then there, no one will be interested in entering into this uh, power generation business uh, because uh, they will not be able uh, to uh, compete against a monopoly. Now, uh, why is it that Sharp is having such a difficulty here uh, today? Uh, it is uh, uh, because uh, they they have a loss uh, to the uh, price uh, competition, uh, the cost competition. Uh, but uh, because there is that uh, competition of uh, uh, price, uh, then everyone tries uh, their best uh, to reduce uh, their cost. And so the impact of having uh, these uh, monopoly uh, utilities is a much larger impact on the uh, electricity uh, price uh, than uh, the uh, nuclear uh, power. Uh, issue. Uh, so uh, please uh, do uh, pay more attention uh, to uh, the uh, the disadvantage of having uh, this uh, monopoly. Now, uh, people may say uh, that 67% uh, have already been uh, uh, deregulated. 
However, uh, we can say uh, that in actuality, while you, they claim that this is already a liberalized market, 95% of the power is uh, being uh, provided uh, by the monopolies. And uh, these uh, regional uh, monopolies also operate uh, the power generation as well as the transmission and distribution, uh, which means that even if you want uh, to uh, enter into this competition, uh, you have to uh, then uh, pay for the uh, use of the transmission and distribution uh, uh, network of the uh, power utilities. Now, uh, we now uh, have a new law uh, which makes it possible uh, to uh, unbundle uh, and then uh, to uh, get uh, some uh, private uh, entities uh, to be engaged uh, in the power generation. And I think it is wonderful that we are seeing uh, the emergence of uh, these uh, utilities all over the country. But what's very important is that there is going to be uh, unbundling and that there are these uh, monopolies uh, be uh, dismantled, because that is going to be uh, the most important uh, 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 resolution uh, for the problems that we have. Uh, right now, uh, we may have a uh, unbundling uh, just on uh, which is uh, just a superficial uh, unbundling. And it is uh, the Power Utilities uh, Federation uh, which is saying that we already have uh, this unbundling. Uh, but uh, these are people uh, who are uh, the uh, owners uh, of the uh, major power utilities. And so uh, even if uh, there are uh, unbundled. Uh, they have a holding company uh, which has as its subsidiaries the generators as well as the uh, transmission operators and distribution operation. So that is not a true uh, competition. We need to have a much uh, fairer uh, competition, uh, which means uh, that uh, we are not uh, or we cannot allow uh, the existence of holding companies uh, which will have its arms in all uh, facets of uh, power uh, generation and uh, delivery. So we need to have a true uh, competition where you can have uh, various uh, power generators uh, use uh, the grid in an equal manner uh, as the other uh, competing uh, power generators under the uh, under equal uh, conditions and equal rights. Now, this is not just uh, for uh, Japan uh, to consider. Now, in most of the OECD uh, participant uh, countries, and uh, we know that over 30 countries already have unbundled uh, environment. So uh, it's just uh, Japan and Mexico among the OECD uh, nations uh, where this unbundling has not uh, taken uh, place. And uh, you, uh, so it's just uh, Japan and Mexico. All the other countries have already gone ahead uh, and unbundled uh, generation and uh, delivery. And so what we need to do uh, is uh, to allow uh, deregulation for more uh, competition. Uh, but uh, for uh, the uh, power grid, then there needs to be a strengthened uh, regulation. So uh, for uh, those uh, operators uh, who want to continue uh, with the nuclear power uh, generation and have uh, less competition as possible, uh, uh, their, uh, their, what they're asserting is that uh, if uh, we do not uh, have any uh, nuclear, then uh, we are going to have to face a consequence of a much higher electricity uh, bill. However, we can say that that is not uh, true. Now, uh, there could be uh, some uh, CO2 uh, taxation on the uh, thermal power uh, plants. Uh, 
We are going to be seeing uh, the, uh, the uh, increase uh, in uh, the, uh, the electricity bill because of the CO2 uh, taxation. Uh, but uh, the, the rest of the calculation uh, for the electricity uh, cost uh, is going to be just about the same uh, among the three scenarios, 0%, 5%, 15%, 20%. And so uh, the best uh, solution uh, for a uh, much lower electricity bill will be uh, to dismantle all the monopolies that we have uh, here in Japan. So uh, we want to uh, make sure uh, that the power bills do not uh, increase. And so uh, that means that we need to have unbundling uh, between the power generation and uh, the transmission. And for if we are going to have zero uh, percent uh, nuclear for 2030, this will be the key uh, issue. Now, uh, today, uh, we just uh, spoke, right now, I spoke about the economic uh, aspect uh, of uh, not having any uh, nuclear power. Now, uh, rather than uh, speaking about uh, the uh, change in the electricity bill, and uh, we have said uh, that the difference among the three scenarios could be maybe just one to two percent. And so, uh, regardless of which scenario we uh, choose, it is going to be the same uh, power. Uh, price that we are going to have to uh, pay. Uh, so who said that discussion aside, uh, what we should be looking for is a safe and a secure environment uh, for our future uh, generations, uh, for the children uh, of our generation. And I think it is the responsibility of uh, those of us uh, adults uh, here uh, today in Japan um, to ensure uh, that there is a uh, right uh, future for the children. Uh, we have invited speakers from many uh, different uh, countries of the world, and I do hope uh, that uh, what we learn from there uh, or her discussions her will help us uh, towards the future uh, of uh, this country. Thank you. And I understand that uh, Mr. Hateyama uh, has also joined us uh, for today. So could we just have uh, Mr. Hateyama say a few words? Good morning, everyone. Today, I think this room is full of the future. It was for this reason that I decided to be here at age 30 this morning. In regard to my being on the podium, I feel it is rather out of place for me to be standing in front of you, uh, lecturing to you. Three years ago, I spoke at the UN, and I said that by, uh, we would reduce uh, our CO2 emissions uh, in a very great way. And as the person responsible for producing such an announcement, I feel now that our goals are being endangered. That is why I decided to take part in today's symposium. This year, in Tokyo, in our home in Tokyo, we have a very beautiful butterfly that came to visit us, as always. In the past, this butterfly did not exist. Uh, you can only find them in the southern parts of Japan, such as in Kyushu. However, this year, in fact, for the past few years, we have seen this butterfly appear always in the Tokyo area. I feel, therefore, uh, very strongly that we are seeing climate change occur. And it is because of uh, this situation that I am faced with the question, what should politicians do? And I think that uh, what Mr. Son has prepared for us, the challenge that he has prepared for us is that we have to think not only of the present, but we must think of the future. We must think about how best to prepare for the future. I think that is the a wonderful concept that politicians must follow. Mr. Son spoke about solar, biomass, wind energy, 
many other possibilities for the future. I have also recently learned about some kind of microscopic organisms that can be used perhaps for some kind of fuel or power generation in the future. Perhaps you might, many of you in this audience are familiar with this. What I'm saying, in other words, is that I believe that a direction can certainly be found in this room for a better future for all of us. Of course, what is important is that we must be able to nurture an organization or organizations that will be able to battle the existing uh, vested interests. I made a promise to the world, and I believe that I cannot allow this promise to be broken. And as a result, I have spoken with Mr. Stone. I've explained that there are many, many obstacles, many, many walls that face us, but I believe that we must all put all of our strengths together to break down these walls so that we can have a fresh wind blow that will be that will provide a better world for our future, that will also provide greater impetus for growth in the world. In other words, I believe that what this wonderful symposium is going to be doing today is of vast importance. I would like simply to express my greatest appreciation for all of your efforts. Congratulations for being able to hold such a wonderful uh, conference today. Mr. Yukio Hatoyama, thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Son, thank you very much. We would now like to move to the keynote speech. The Minister for National Policy, Mr. Motoisa Furukawa, will say a few words. Minister Furukawa, please. Good morning, everyone. I have just been introduced. I am the Minister for National Policy. My name is Motoisa Furukawa. Today, I know that energy experts from around the world are assembled here today. The fact that I've been given this opportunity to speak in front of you today is uh, something that fills me with great gratitude. At present, I am serving as the head of the uh, Energy Environment uh, Committee, and as a result, I'm very much at the forefront of the government policy in this area. But we are presently in the final stages of putting together is the energy policy for the future. Of course, the events of what happened in uh, March of last year has greatly affected our thinking, and as a result, I have taken many opportunities to visit Fukushima to be close to the site, uh, also to visit the many different uh, areas of Japan where people have evacuated to so that I can listen to the voices of, of the people who were involved. My very frank imp uh, impression is that uh, there was a, a Russian colleague of mine who said, we don't need heaven, but we would want a homeland. In other words, what is more important for people is a homeland, even more important perhaps the concept of heaven. And here we have today in Japan many people who have been deprived of their homeland. Many people who have evacuated, I have spoken with many of them. They say we might be able to return someday to our homes, but at that time will we be able to invite our grandchildren? to visit. In other words, there is such tremendous anxiety about radiation levels that these people say such things. Given these statements, I believe that Japanese people, we Japanese people, not only Japanese people, but everyone in the world must look at the values and way of thinking before March 11th and change them dramatically as a result of the lessons we have learned from March 11th. And based on this new way of thinking, this new set of values, we must create new policies and realize them for the future. That is the great resolve that I have in my heart today. With this accident, many people have come to the realization that they would want to have 
a future that is dependent not on a dangerous energy sources but safer ones. They want to be able to create a situation where they will not have to be deprived of their homelands or have to be sent away from their homelands for many, many years. In other words, many people feel very strongly that they want to get away from a uh, dependence on nuclear energy as quickly as possible. And in order to do this, each individual citizen must pull together their thoughts and unite them into one large national way of thinking. It is uh, this large national way of thinking that we, in, as members of the government, are trying to coordinate and understand and put into policy to realize and make specific or concrete the will of the people. That is what we are in the government are attempting to do today. At the same time, in our national unit, national policy division, we are, uh, under the auspices of the Prime Minister, putting together new policies for the future. Uh, these are economic policies, so, for example, the green, green growth uh, policies, which we think are very, very important strategic growth policies going forward. As you know, Japanese society, after the collapse of the bubble, suffered for many years uh, from a period of, st uh, period of stagnation. A major reason for this long period of stagnation is that demographics are involved, uh, populations have fallen, and we are seeing the most rapid graying of society uh, than any country in the world. In other words, our social structure itself, uh, our social composition itself is beginning to change. Given uh, this reality, we cannot simply extrapolate from past policies and continue uh, with business as usual. Uh, if we do so, we cannot expect any further economic growth. However, if we look at the past experiences of other nations, we see that when they have extricated themselves out of long periods of stagnation, they have pursued dramatic technical, technological innovation. And as a result of that, they have been able to see new kinds of economic growth. A recent example is in the United States, 1990s. As I listened to Mr. Son's presentation earlier, I was thinking back to 20 years ago when Mr. Son spoke about uh, the world of new telecommunication technologies. The United States in the 1990s, until the 1990s, they suffered in the United States from a long period of economic stagnation. Many people said the end of the American era is over. However, once in the 1990s began, with Mr. Clinton and Mr. Gore, they put together this information highway concept and provided leadership for this new information technology revolution. And as a result, uh, a new economy was born, and uh, the economic growth rate of the United States shot up. In the 2000s, we saw that this economic growth uh, continued uh, as a result of this uh, IT revolution. In my Japan economic revitalization uh, plan, I and my colleagues are focusing primarily on green growth technology. We believe that, similar to the information technology field, this is an area that has tremendous potential for future economic growth. And by developing this area, we will be able to realize many different kinds of innovations, technological innovations, and it will provide a way for us to be able to realize our potential growth rate and extricate ourselves from this long period of economic stagnation. That is my thinking. Today, I would like to speak in brief about the IT revolution and the revolution that we are intending to pursue, this green growth revolution, and to talk a little bit about their similarities. I believe 
that many people, as was mentioned in Mr. Song's speech, many people still have some skepticism about how much this green growth technology can actually achieve in terms of economic growth. However, just as when we look back at the IT revolution, we see that in retrospect, it has had a tremendous impact on society and on all of our daily lives. I believe that many years from now, people will look back and see how much the green technology revolution changed the world. So I would like to explain a little bit about this today, very, very briefly. The slide that you are seeing at present is showing you the telecommunications uh, world before the IT revolution and also the current uh, energy situation before our green uh, growth technology is implemented. You can see that the structures are very, very similar. In other words, as Mr. Son mentioned, it, over 20 years ago, when the IT revolution was beginning in the United States, I believe that many of the aspects at that time are very similar to uh, the aspects that we see in the uh, energy field uh, today. We see from this chart that uh, just 20 years ago, mobile phones were not as prevalent and as small and as important in our lives as they are today. And no one, I think, or very few people imagined that they would become so prevalent or they would become so small and that they would have such great capacity, for example, not only to uh, convey uh, data information, but also uh, be able to uh, show video uh, information as well. But we've seen that the mobile world has dramatically uh, exploded and changed our Worlds. And we are seeing also in recent years the explosion of the smartphone market as well. Again, I would like to explain that 20 years ago, very few people could have imagined such a situation. Innovation led to new innovations and led to new industries, one after the other. That, I think, is uh, the reality of what happened with the IT revolution. I believe that a very similar thing will happen with the green energy field. In other words, I think it has this kind of potential for future growth. It is this future potential growth that the government must uh, keep in mind. In other words, the government must create policies to allow this green energy revolution to occur, uh, to, to provide a key for future innovations, which will give birth to few other innovations. In other words, the green energy innovate, uh, revolution I believe uh, will lead to this kind of world. In other words, on the left-hand side, we have uh, how the Internet world was from the 1990s, and we can see on the right-hand side what the green energy revolution will uh, lead to after 2010. In other words, I've explained different market conditions and different network infrastructure, the way the kinds of technologies that are used, etc. In other words, I believe that in regard to uh, the final conclusion, I believe that just as the Internet Revolution created a new world, I believe the green energy technology revolution will create a more international uh, grid and network, more interesting green economies. I believe that the development of new technologies, in other words, to create a, a chain of innovation is something that the government must take leadership in creating. Uh, we are cre calling this uh, attempt in the uh, government as a green growth strategy. And at present, uh, we have three aspects of this. First of all, we want to get away from nuclear energy and go to green uh, energy technologies. We want to be able also to create a new energy system, uh, getting away from centralized systems and more distributed systems. Uh, also, we want to have green growth, which is something uh, that is not only for the domestic market, but also for the uh, international markets as well, as well. In other words, we believe that this can be national policy, which will allow uh, the economy to grow not only for uh, the domestic market, but for all markets throughout the world. By the end of the year, we will put together a more final green growth strategy policy. In order to realize this, goal, the strategy, we must get away from nuclear energy 
And by doing so, we will be able to revitalize the Japanese economy. These are some of the key components of our strategy. In order, again, to realize this, we must have a, a changed awareness and changed way of thinking of each individual citizen of uh, Japan. We must have their cooperation and participation in these policies. Today, we put, have put together a new homepage on this uh, topic so that we can think together about creating a new green society with uh, the people of Japan. In other words, we want to walk with the citizens of Japan to create a new green energy society, to create a green energy revolution. It is only by realizing such policies that we will be able to show that we have learned from the lessons of 311. We will show to the world that we have changed our direction and we will be able to provide leadership in a new direction for the people who are still suffering from the effects of this terrible accident. In other words, we are moving forward in a very great way, but we must do so with the cooperation and participation of the people of Japan. So beginning with today's conference, I would like to ask for not only the support, but also the participation and guidance of all of the people in Japan. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mr. Furukawa, thank you very much. Then continuing on, I'd like to call upon Mr. Mihara, uh, who is the uh, Energy Conservation and uh, Natural uh, Energy General uh, Manager at the Agency of Natural Resources and Energy. My name is Nihara. Uh, I serve as the manager of the uh, Energy Conservation and Renewables. And uh, Mr. Takahara, our DG, it was to have come here to make the speech. However, as you know, there has been the creation, the writing up of the various scenarios for the government. And so today, Mr. Takahara told me that uh, he was unable to make it, and I was woken up in the early hours of uh, this morning to uh, make the speech in his stead. And of course, I cannot uh, make the speech uh, in the same position as my uh, DG, Mr. Takahara, so I will be making a, another presentation. So relating to the theme today, which is renewables, uh, let me make my presentation. So what sort of model uh, is uh, Japan trying to aim at? And uh, we in our own uh, uh, department is trying to write the scenario up. And uh, uh, needless to say, concerning the introduction of renewables, uh, Japan is a laggard. And much of that is, it's only 1% or so, and much of that is in hydro. And uh, this is a very low level amongst the industrialized nations. And on July 1, the uh, feed-in tariff uh, started, and the law was enacted for that purpose. And we do hope that there will be an increase uh, in leaps and bounds in renewables production. So this year will be the transition year for renewables in Japan. And what is important uh, in that uh, process is that most people say renewables are expensive. But um, please refer to the graph on the right. Uh, this is per kilowatt hour. And what is the cost of the various energies? Of course, nuclear energy. Energy uh, post Fukushima, of course, has become extremely expensive, so please leave that out of the comparison. But compared uh, to thermal or uh, hydro, that's about 10 yen. So geothermal and wind would be pretty much uh, competitive. 
and uh, PV is about 40 yen. But uh, we do hope that we can create a market by having F, uh, the feed-in tariff for PV, for, uh, photovoltaics. And I think uh, it's uh, the uh, various renewables will be commercially viable. So therefore, so the question, most people focus on the question of whether nuclear power generation will become nil or not. But if you look at the uh, renewables, particularly for wind, uh, that will grow at quite a high pace. And that is a target that we have set in our department for energy conservation and renewables. And I think uh, uh, we would like to minimize the cost for renewables as much as is possible. So if uh, the uh, nuclear is nil, then what would happen is the uh, 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 renewables would have to be increased up to 35 and uh, uh, wind power generation to 9%. So, and as Mr. Son has also a uh, baseball team, it's essential to have four baseball starters to start the game. And so the question becomes, how can we increase wind power generation? And there's quite an amount of wind power resources in this country. And the second area is photovoltaics, which is a little frothy in Japan right now, and it's quite an increase here. And of course, the cost is not cheap. And I think we can push uh, PV generation and however, we need the third and the fourth uh, starting pitchers for the baseball team. And those are the, uh, the third and the fourth would be and geothermal, and uh, the, the question there would be, it is not possible to create geothermal power plants in the uh, uh, national parks in Japan, and it's a difficult, bit, bit difficult to increase that. And concerning PV, um, is it possible, it's practically impossible to have PV uh, solar cells on all of the uh, uh, roofs of Japan, but um, I think it's, and I think it's possible to come up to a million or more than 1.12 million households with PV on their roofs. Even now, I think, I think from July 1, 1.5 million households have um, uh, be, been building uh, solar panels on their roofs. And so therefore, I think that's not a, 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 a impossible scenario. And this is the graph of the growth. So in the, uh, this is the expansion post-FIT law. So, so uh, post-July, so I think the uh, renewables will increase uh, to this level. And uh, for PV, there are not various uh, sort of rules and uh, uh, to overcome. So, so mega solar, so there's going to be half a million added there in kilowatts. So, so this is the first year from July onwards. That's about three, three months, uh, two months. Uh, so I think it's possible to go up. But uh, uh, I mean, not, I'm not saying that uh, there has to be solar panels on 12 million households, but I think it's possible to increase that to that level. And uh, concerning some building rules, I think we should have a uh, amendment of that so that uh, at least for 4 million households that are rebuilt every year, I think more and more uh, there could be solar panels on there. So uh, based upon the new building rules, then maybe half the households that are rebuilt or uh, constructed anew would have solar panels on their roofs. And uh, of course, uh, with uh, the further uh, increase in the production, there will be the uh, minimization of the weight of the solar panels, I'm sure. And uh, relating to the regulation of uh, power generation is the question of wind power. So, so therefore, for the uh, wind power, uh, with if there is uh, nuclear power is brought down to nil uh, and the uh, renewables goes up to 35, then uh, uh, the uh, uh, 
percentage of wind power would have to go up to nine. Uh, right now in uh, Hokkaido uh, and uh, in the uh, northeastern part of the uh, uh, main island of Honshu, uh, please refer to the various locations that have applied to set up a uh, wind farm or wind turbines. So, and these uh, are the companies, these are the generators uh, who are saying that they would like to link up to the grid. That's 1.87 gigawatts in Hokkaido, and the uh, Tohoku area uh, was 3.24 gigawatts. So there's quite a lot of areas in Hokkaido where the, the grid uh, is, does not uh, extend. So therefore, however, compared to that, there's only 0.56 megawatts allowable on the grid. So that's uh, three or four times that. Three. So this is the question of the grid connection, the problem of the grid connection. So if you look at Hokkaido and the Tohoku uh, area, so if we have investments of three, 300 billion yen or so, the grid can be expanded and strengthened. So many, many people say that it's impossible to make investments capex in the grid uh, unless people live there or, or there's a demand for electricity. So I think we can overcome some of the rules and regulations. and. Uh, a tar sort of a fee could be charged uh, to wheel this electricity. And as Mr. Son mentioned, so the, in the transformation of the economy uh, of Japan, if we look back in its history, then when we have a transformation of the economy, there's always new uh, companies, entrepreneurs coming in. And I think what is essential here is to have um, trans new transmission companies, uh, those dedicated to wheeling, coming into this area. So for the last six months, I have been studying this area and the electricity power companies the incumbent are saying that they have to have they have to provide universal service the same quality service to all of their consumers and users at the same time tariff and what happens is that in terms of the infrastructure there it's a there, in some areas, there is too much invested. So perhaps concerning the grid network, perhaps we could control uh, if there is too much demand. Uh, perhaps uh, that demand should be controlled at uh, some point in time if it is going to uh, cause the uh, collapse of the grid. So, for example, in Germany, in order to attain 35 percent by 2020, 20 billion yen, uh, 20 billion euro will be invested in terms of the grid uh, capex by the four electricity power companies, is the sort of numbers I have been hearing. Another issue is the question of variability of uh, the renewables uh, power generation in Europe. So, so uh, what uh, the thermal power generation and hydro, uh, pumped hydro, is utilized to level uh, the uh, situation on the grid. So, in the short run, I think what can be used will be the power storage. So, this is a photograph of the uh, Wakanai Mega Solar in Hokkaido. So, on the right hand side, you will see the PV uh, generating facilities on the left. Uh, um, indicated in green is the uh, uh, NASA uh, storage, the batteries. So 30% of what is generated is uh, charged uh, into these uh, uh, bat na uh, NAS batteries. And so if we want recharges, the NAS batteries at 50% of power generation, then uh, it will be possible to levelize the uh, uh, power situation on the grid. But of course, it's going to uh, cost a co quite an amount. So a pumped hydro would be much more inexpensive to carry out this leveling. So I think quite a number of companies is looking into this question, and uh, I think with the further expansion of the production of these uh, NAS uh, batteries, uh, the price would come down. And another question that we, ha we face is the grid connection and usage. In fact, 
So, if uh, the uh, electric power companies are responsible for all of the questions concerning the grid, then that is not the situation that we find in other quarters of the economy. And amongst the uh, users of electricity, the tariff was set at the same, so it was, no, it was not necessary or uh, not essential to look into the adjustments amongst the consumers and users. But uh, if you look at the situation, uh, this is the uh, Kita Kyushu example. And uh, this is the area uh, that used to belong to New Nippon Steel. And whether uh, in this whole area, the whole campus, uh, the New Nippon Steel is uh, responsible for the uh, distribution uh, of electricity to all of the users in this area. And just as uh, we have seen some examples in Spain, so, so the demand for the electricity for the next day is calculated, is uh, extrapolated, and uh, uh, there is a level one to level five, uh, depending on the demand. And then uh, there will be peak time, daytime, living time, and night time applicable to all of the uh, users. So this is uh, the example for July 5th. And level two was announced. And so there there was 11.9% reduction in uh, uh, electricity demand. And so on the 6th, July 6th, uh, level 3 was then announced as the tariff, which is much more expensive. And then impact in terms of energy conservation was 26.4. So there's an example in Toyota as well. And Eddy. So if there is a conservation of energy, then some eddy points or mileage is provided to those consumers. And so this does not infringe any of the electricity generation rules or regulations. So HEMS, the uh, Household Energy Management System, which would visualize the amount of energy consumed, and even with that, there's a reduction at peak of 30% of the electricity consumption. So by changing the incentives, it is possible to uh, have demand-side management. Uh, so I think we have to adopt the uh, ordinary thinking and the ordinary mindset of ordinary comp companies in the area of electricity production and uh, distribution. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Nihara. With this, we'd like to conclude this opening session. We'd like to have photo session. So, for the, the people from mass media, please come forward. And the speakers, um, could you please go on to the stage? Thank you.
それではこれより少し休憩をいただきたいと思います。お席をお離れになる際は貴重品をお持ちください。So Leave your chairs and please take your valuables.、Uh, we are going to start the discussion one from 10 40. And we are going to、um, upload all the materials to the JREFs site. And so you can utilize that. Also,、uh, we are going to collect the headset for simultaneous interpretation.、Uh, so please don't take them out.